Gothic is an extinct East Germanic language that was spoken by the Goths. It is known primarily from the Codex Argentius, a 6th-century copy of a 4th-century Bible translation, and is the only East Germanic language with a sizable text corpus. All others, including Burgundian and Vandalic, are known, if at all, only from proper names that survived in historical accounts, and from loanwords in other languages such as Portuguese, Spanish, and French. As a Germanic language, Gothic is a part of the Indo-European language family. It is the earliest Germanic language that is attested in any sizable texts, but it lacks any modern descendants. The oldest documents in Gothic date back to the 4th century. The language was in decline by the mid-6th century, partly because of the military defeat of the Goths at the hands of the Franks, the elimination of the Goths in Italy, and geographic isolation in Spain the Gothic language lost its last and probably already declining function as a church language when the Visigoths converted to Catholicism in 589. The language survived as a domestic language in the Iberian Peninsula modern Spain and Portugal as late as the 8th century. Gothic seeming terms are found in manuscripts subsequent to this date, but these may or may not belong to the same language. In particular, a language known as Crimean Gothic survived in the Lower Danube area and in isolated mountain regions in Crimea. Lacking certain sound changes characteristic of Gothic, however, Crimean Gothic cannot be a lineal descendant of Bible Gothic. The existence of such early attested texts makes it a language of considerable interest in comparative linguistics. Topic: History and evidence. Only a few documents in Gothic survive, not enough for completely reconstructing the language. Most Gothic corpora are translations or glosses of other languages namely, Greek, so foreign linguistic elements most certainly influenced the texts. These are the primary sources. The largest body of surviving documentation consists of codices commissioned by the Arian bishop Ophilas Wolfila, 311-382, the leader of a community of Visigothic Christians in the Roman province of Mosia modern Serbia, Bulgaria, Romania. He commissioned a translation of the Greek Bible into the Gothic language, of which roughly three-quarters of the New Testament and some fragments of the Old Testament have survived. The translations, performed by several scholars, are collected in the following codices, Codex Argentius Uppsala, including the Speyer fragment, 188 leaves the best-preserved Gothic manuscript and dating from the 6th century, it was preserved and transmitted by northern Ostrogoths in modern Italy. It contains a large part of the four Gospels. Since it is a translation from Greek, the language of the Codex Argentius is replete with borrowed Greek words and Greek usages. The syntax in particular is often copied directly from the Greek, Codex Ambrosianus Milan and the Codex Torinensis Turin, five parts, totaling 193 leaves it contains scattered passages from the New Testament including parts of the Gospels and the Epistles, of the Old Testament Nehemiah, and some commentaries known as Scaranes. The text likely had been somewhat modified by copyists, Codex Gisensis Gearing, one leaf, fragments of Luke chapters 23-24 was found in an excavation in Arsenault in Egypt in 1907 and was destroyed by water damage in 1945, after copies had already been made by researchers. Codex Carolinus Wolfenbuttel, Four Leaves, Fragments of Romans Chapters 11-15 Codex Vaticanus Latinus 5750 Vatican City, Three Leaves, pages 57-58, 59-60, and 61-62 of the Scaranes. This is a fragment of Codex Ambrosianus E. A scattering of old documents, alphabets, calendars, glosses found in a number of manuscripts and a few runic inscriptions between 3 and 13 that are known or suspected to be Gothic. Some scholars believe that these inscriptions are not at all Gothic. Several names in an Indian inscription were thought to be possibly Gothic by Krause. Furthermore, late 9th century Christian inscriptions using the Gothic alphabet, not runes, and copying or mimicking biblical Gothic orthography have been found at Mangup in Crimea. A small dictionary of more than 80 words and a song without translation, compiled by the Fleming Ogier Giselin de Busbeck, the Habsburg ambassador to the court of the Ottoman Empire in Istanbul from 1555 to 1562, who was curious to find out about the language and by arrangement met two speakers of Crimean Gothic and listed the terms in his compilation Turkish letters. These terms date from nearly a millennium later than Ulfilas, so are not representative of his language. 
Busbecue's material also contains many puzzles and enigmas and is difficult to interpret in the light of comparative Germanic linguistics. Reports of the discovery of other parts of Ulfless's Bible have not been substantiated. Heinrich May in 1968 claimed to have found in England twelve leaves of a palimpsest containing parts of the Gospel of Matthew. Only fragments of the Gothic translation of the Bible have been preserved. The translation was apparently done in the Balkans region by people in close contact with Greek Christian culture. The Gothic Bible apparently was used by the Visigoths in Iberia until about 700, and perhaps for a time in Italy, the Balkans, and Ukraine. In exterminating Arianism, many texts in Gothic were probably expunged and overwritten as palimpsests or collected and burned. Apart from biblical texts, the only substantial Gothic document that still exists and the only lengthy text known to have been composed originally in the Gothic language, is the Skeirains, a few pages of commentary on the Gospel of John. Very few secondary sources make reference to the Gothic language after about 800. In De Incrementis Ecclesia Christianae 840-842, Walifred Strabo, a Frankish monk who lived in Swabia, speaks of a group of monks, who reported that even now certain peoples in Scythia Dobruja, especially around Thomas spoke a Sermo Theodiscus Germanic language, the language of the Gothic translation of the Bible, and they used such a liturgy. In evaluating medieval texts that mention the Goths, many writers used the word Goths to mean any Germanic people in Eastern Europe such as the Varangians, many of whom certainly did not use the Gothic language as known from the Gothic Bible. Some writers even referred to Slavic-speaking people as Goths. However, it is clear from Ulfless's translation that despite some puzzles the language belongs with the Germanic language group, not with Slavic. The relationship between the language of the Crimean Goths and Ulfilis's Gothic is less clear. The few fragments of Crimean Gothic from the 16th century show significant differences from the language of the Gothic Bible although some of the glosses, such as Ada for egg, could indicate a common heritage, and Gothic Mina moon, compared to Crimean Gothic mine, can suggest an East Germanic connection. Generally, the Gothic language refers to the language of Ulfilas, but the attestations themselves are largely from the 6th century, long after Ulfilas had died. The above list is not exhaustive, and a more extensive list is available on the website of the Wolfilla Project. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Alphabet and transliteration. Ulfilas's Gothic, as well as that of the Skeirains and various other manuscripts, was written using an alphabet that was most likely invented by Ulfilas himself for his translation. Some scholars such as Braun, claim that it was derived from the Greek alphabet only while others maintain that there are some Gothic letters of runic or Latin origin. A standardized system is used for transliterating Gothic words into the Latin script. The system mirrors the conventions of the native alphabet, such as writing long, i, as a. The Goths used their equivalents of e and o alone only for long higher vowels, using the digraphs i and o much as in French for the corresponding short or lower vowels. There are two variant spelling systems, a «ra», one that directly transliterates the original Gothic script and a «normalized», one that adds diacritics macrons and acute accents to certain vowels to clarify the pronunciation or, in certain cases, to indicate the Proto-Germanic origin of the vowel in question. The latter system is usually used in the academic literature. The following table shows the correspondence between spelling and sound for vowels. Notes this normalized transliteration system devised by Jacob Grimm is used in some modern editions of Gothic texts and in studies of common Germanic. It signals distinctions not made by Ulfilas in his alphabet. Rather, they reflect various origins in Proto-Germanic. Thus, I is used for the sound derived from the Proto-Germanic short vowels e and i before, h, and, r. I is used for the sound derived from the Proto-Germanic diphthong i. Some scholars have considered this sound to have remained as a diphthong in Gothic. However, Ulfilas was highly consistent in other spelling inventions, which makes it unlikely that he assigned two different sounds to the same digraph. Furthermore, he consistently used the digraph to represent Greek I, which was then certainly a monophthong. A monophthongal value is accepted by Eduard Prokosch in his influential A Common Germanic Grammar. It had earlier been accepted by Joseph Wright but only in an appendix to his grammar of the Gothic language. I is used for the sound derived from the common Germanic long vowel e before a vowel. 
O is used for the sound derived from common Germanic diphthong O. It cannot be related to a Greek digraph, since O then represented a sequence of a vowel and a spirant fricative consonant, which Ulfilas transcribed as A in representing Greek words. Nevertheless, the argument based on simplicity is accepted by some influential scholars. The normal environment of occurrence refers to native words. In foreign words, these environments are often greatly disturbed. For example, the short sounds and I alternate in native words in a nearly allophonic way, with occurring in native words only before the consonants H, H, R, while I occurs everywhere else. Nevertheless, there are a few exceptions such as I before R in Hiri consistently in the reduplicating syllable of certain past tense verbs regardless of the following consonant, which indicate that these sounds had become phomicized. In foreign borrowings, however, and I occur freely in all environments, reflecting the corresponding vowel quality in the source language. Paradigmatic alterations can occur either intra-paradigm between two different forms within a specific paradigm or cross-paradigm between the same form in two different paradigms of the same class. Examples of intra-paradigm alternation are gawi slash a dot y district nom versus gajis slash dot g's district gen maui slash ma dot y maiden nom versus maujos slash m dot jo s maiden gen iwi slash theta i dot y maiden nom versus yuhos slash theta u dot jo s maiden gen taui t i deed nom versus tojis slash to dot g's deed gen nas n s corpse nom versus navi slash na dot y s corpses nom triu triu tree nom versus triwis slash tri dot wis tree gen taujan slash t dot jan to do versus tawita slash ta dot y ah i he did stoyan slash sto dot jan to judge versus stawita per stone i ah i he judged Examples of cross paradigm alternation are class 4 verbs q iman, k iman, to come versus byron, brand, to carry, cumans, k humans, having, come versus borans, brands, having, carried, class viib verbs leeton slash la dot tan, to let versus cyan slash s dot n, to so, note similar preterites laylot slash l dot lo t, i, he let, say so slash s dot so, i, he sowed. A combination of intra and cross paradigm alternation occurs in class 5 snuan slash sni dot one to hasten versus snow s n i he hastened expected asterisk sna compare q iman to come q a m i he came. The carefully maintained alternations between u and i w suggest that u may have been something other than u. Various possibilities have been suggested. For example, high central or high back unrounded vowels such as. Under these theories, the spelling of U is derived from the fact that the sound alternates with IW before a vowel, based on the similar alternations O and A. The most common theory, however, simply posits U as the pronunciation of U. Macrons represent long A and U, however, long I appears as A, following the representation used in the native alphabet. Macrons are often also used in the case of E and O, however, they are sometimes omitted since these vowels are always long. Long O occurs only before the consonants, H, H, and represents Proto-Germanic nasalized, A tilde, H, H, which is written with a single character in the native alphabet, is transliterated using the symbol, which is used only in transliterating Gothic. K, is similarly written with a single character in the native alphabet and is transliterated Q, with no following U. However, is written with two letters in the native alphabet and hence GW. The lack of a single letter to represent this sound may result from its restricted distribution only after n and its rarity. Theta is written similarly to other Germanic languages. Although is the allophone of n occurring before and k, it is written g following the native alphabet convention, which in turn follows Greek usage, which leads to occasional ambiguities, e.g. sags saw s song, but trigs try s faithful. Compare English. True. Topic: <inaudible> Phonology. <inaudible> it is possible to determine more or less exactly how the Gothic of Ulfilas was pronounced, primarily through comparative phonetic reconstruction. Furthermore, because Ulfilas tried to follow the original Greek text as much as possible in his translation, it is known that he used the same writing conventions as those of contemporary Greek. Since the Greek of that period is well documented, it is possible to reconstruct much of Gothic pronunciation from translated texts. 
In addition, the way in which non-Greek names are transcribed in the Greek Bible and in Ulphilus's Bible is very informative. Topic: Vowels. A, I, and U can be either long or short. Gothic writing distinguishes between long and short vowels only for I by writing I for the short form and A for the long, a digraph or false diphthong in an imitation of Greek usage A equals I. Single vowels are sometimes long where a historically present nasal consonant has been dropped in front of an h, a case of compensatory lengthening. Thus, the preterite of the verb bringen, Brian, to bring, English bring, Dutch brengen, German bringen, becomes brata, bra xta, English brought, Dutch brocht, German bracht, from Proto-Germanic asterisk brandt. In detailed transliteration, when the intent is more phonetic transcription, length is noted by a macron or failing that, often a circumflex, brada, brada. This is the only context in which a uh, appears natively whereas u, like i, is found often enough in other contexts, brux, useful, Dutch gebruik, German gebrauk, Icelandic bruk, use. E, and, o, are long close mid-vowels. They are written as e and o, ni, ne, near. English nigh, Dutch nader, German na, fajan, fojan, to feed, and are short open mid vowels. They are noted using the digraphs i and o, tihun, thun, ten, Dutch tien, German zen, Icelandic tiu, dauter, dxtar, daughter, Dutch doctor, German doctor, Icelandic daughter. In transliterating Gothic, accents are placed on the second vowel of these digraphs I and O to distinguish them from the original diphthongs I and O, tihun, doubter. In most cases short, and, are allophones of, I, U, before, R, H. Furthermore, the reduplication syllable of the reduplicating preterites has I as well, which was probably pronounced as a short. Finally, short, and, occur in loan words from Greek and Latin apiscopos piscopos topic episcopos bishop lake jo lk jo lectio lection pantius pientius equals pontius the germanic diphthongs i and o appear as digraphs written i and o in gothic researchers have disagreed over whether they were still pronounced as diphthongs i and o in Ulphilus's time 4th century or had become long open mid vowels and ains ains ns1 german eins icelandic ain ago awo o i german aj icelandic auga it is most likely that the latter view is correct as it is indisputable that the digraphs i and o represent the sounds and in some circumstances see below an aj and a were available to unambiguously represent the sounds i and o the digraph a is in fact used to represent o in foreign words such as polis paul and alternations between i a j and o a are scrupulously maintained in paradigms where both variants occur e.g. taujon to do versus past tense to wita did evidence from transcriptions of gothic names into latin suggests that the sound change had occurred very recently when gothic spelling was standardized gothic names with germanic o are rendered with o in latin until the 4th century and o later on ostrogati ostrogati the digraphs i and o are normally written with an accent on the first vowel i o when they correspond to proto-germanic i and o Long and also occur as allophones of e and u o respectively before a following vowel yn wn to blow Dutch yn German wn bowen bn to build Dutch bowen German bowen Icelandic bua to live reside also in Greek words trauada trod gk trod. in detailed transcription these are notated i o y pronounced like German u and French u is a Greek sound used only in borrowed words. It is transliterated as W as it uses the same letter that otherwise denoted the consonant, with, asmus asimus unleavened bread, U, is a falling diphthong, U, dieps, diu, ps, deep, Dutch deep, German tief, Icelandic jupor. Greek diphthongs, in Ulphilus's era, all the diphthongs of classical Greek had become simple vowels in speech monophthongization, except for o, o and u, e, u which were probably still pronounced a beta and beta. they evolved into avenue tilde af and ev tilde ef in modern Greek. Ulphilus notes them, in words borrowed from Greek, as a and aiw, probably pronounced o, u, paulus, pau, lus, paul, gk, paulos, iwagelista, y lista, evangelist, gk. Euangelistes via the Latin evangelista. All vowels including diphthongs can be followed by a w, which was likely pronounced as the second element of a diphthong with roughly the sound of u. 
It seems likely that this is more of an instance of phonetic juxtaposition than of true diphthongs such as, for example, the sound aj in the French word pie straw, which is not the diphthong i but rather a vowel followed by an approximant, alu alw, olive oil snow, lassus, lassus, tired English lazy. Topic consonants In general, Gothic consonants are devoiced at the ends of words. Gothic is rich in fricative consonants although many of them may have been approximants, it is hard to separate the two derived by the processes described in Grimm's Law and Werner's Law and characteristic of Germanic languages. Gothic is unusual among Germanic languages in having a, z, phoneme, which has not become, r, through roticization. Furthermore, the doubling of written consonants between vowels suggests that Gothic made distinctions between long and short, or geminated consonants, ada, ada dad, kunin, kunin to know, Dutch kennen, German kennen to know, Icelandic kunna. Topic stops The voiceless stops, p, t, and, k, are regularly noted by p, t and k respectively, pasca, pasca Easter, from the Greek pasha, tugo tuo, tongue, calbo, calbo calf. The letter q is probably a voiceless labiovelar stop, k, comparable to the Latin q, q iman, k iman to come. In later Germanic languages, this phoneme has become either a consonant cluster, kw, of a voiceless velar stop plus a labia velar approximant English ku, or a simple voiceless velar stop, k, English c, k. The voiced stops, b, d, and are noted by the letters b, d and g. Like the other Germanic languages, they occurred in word initial position, when doubled and after a nasal. In addition, they apparently occurred after other consonants, rb, rb inheritance, husd, husd treasure. This conclusion is based on their behavior at the end of a word, in which they do not change into voiceless fricatives, unlike when they occur after a vowel. There was probably also a voiced labiovelar stop, which was written with the digraph gw. It occurred after a nasal, e.g. sags saw s song, or long as a regular outcome of Germanic asterisk ww, trigs tri s faithful, English true, German true, Icelandic trigor. Similarly, the letters ddj, which is the regular outcome of Germanic asterisk jj, may represent a voiced palatal stop, wadges wa us, wall, Icelandic vegger, twa g twae, two genitive, Icelandic tvegya. Topic. Fricatives S, and, Z, are usually written S and Z. The latter corresponds to Germanic asterisk Z, which has become R or silent in the other Germanic languages. At the end of a word, it is regularly devoiced to S. E.g. size shiz, six, meza m za, greater, English more, Dutch mere, German mare, Icelandic mira versus mes m s, more, rather and theta, written f and are voiceless bilabial and voiceless dental fricatives respectively. It is likely that the relatively unstable sound became f, f and are also derived from b and d at the ends of words and then are devoiced and become approximants, gif i, gif imperative, infinitive jaban, German jeban, me, me theta, with, Old English mid, Old Norse me, Dutch met, German mit. h, is written as h, haban, to have. It was probably pronounced h in word final position and before a consonant as well, not x, since greater than x is written g, not h, ja, ja, and Dutch, German, Scandinavian ja, yes. X is an allophone of at the end of a word or before a voiceless consonant, it is always written g, dags, d a x s, day, German tag. In some borrowed Greek words is the special letter X, which represents the Greek letter chi ch, xri stus, xri stus, Christ, g k, Christus. It may also have signified a, k, beta, and, are voiced fricative found only in between vowels. They are allophones of, b, d, and, and are not distinguished from them in writing. Beta may have become, v, a more stable labiodental form. In the study of Germanic languages, these phonemes are usually transcribed as d and g respectively, haban ha beta and to have, euda theta u, a, people, Dutch diets, German Deutsch, Icelandic Joe greater than English Dutch, ago, o, i, English i, Dutch o o g, German oj, Icelandic a u g a. When occurring after a vowel at the end of a word or before a voiceless consonant, these sounds become unvoiced. Theta and x, e.g. halafs, hls, loaf, 
but genitive halibis HL beta is of a loaf. Plural halibos HL beta OS loaves. Also transcribed HW is the labiovelar equivalent of X, derived from Proto-Indo-European asterisk K. It was probably pronounced a voiceless W, as WH is pronounced in certain dialects of English and in Scots, and an when R R where I I T S white. Topic Sonorants. Gothic has three nasal consonants, one of which is an allophone of the others, all found only in complementary distribution with them. Nasals in Gothic, like most other languages, are pronounced at the same point of articulation as either the consonant that follows them assimilation. Therefore, clusters like MD and NB are not possible. N and per meter are freely distributed and so can be found in any position in a syllable and form minimal pairs except in certain contexts where they are neutralized. N before a bilabial consonant becomes M, while per meter preceding a dental stop becomes N, as per the principle of assimilation described in the previous paragraph. In front of a velar stop, they both become N, and per meter, are transcribed as N and M, and, in writing, neutralization is marked, sniamundo, sniu, mundo, quickly, is not a phoneme and cannot appear freely in Gothic. It is present where a nasal consonant is neutralized before a velar stop and is in a complementary distribution with, N, and per meter. Following Greek conventions, it is normally written as G, sometimes N, agkion, theta agjan, to think, sigkin, sikin, to sink. Tilde nk theta aki theta. Thinks. The cluster ggw sometimes denotes, but sometimes see above. With is transliterated as w before a vowel, weiss, ys, we, twi, twai, two, German's way. J is written as j, jer, jar, year, sakyo, sakyo, strife. L, and, R, occur as in other European languages, lags possibly loss, lax or las, long, mel, me l, hour, English meal, Dutch mal, German mal, Icelandic mal. The exact pronunciation of, R, is unknown, but it is usually assumed to be a trill, R, or a flap, writes, arext, right, afar, afar, after. L, per meter, N, and, R, may occur either between two other consonants of lower sonority or word finally after a consonant of lower sonority. It is probable that the sounds are pronounced partly or completely as syllabic consonants in such circumstances as in English, bottle, or bottom, taggle, tall, or tall, hair, English tail, Icelandic taggle, mames, m theta m, s, or m theta ms, gift. Tykens T K N S or T K N S sign English token Dutch tekken German zeiken Icelandic taken and T A G R tar or tar tear as in crying. Topic <laughs> accentuation and intonation. Accentuation in Gothic can be reconstructed through phonetic comparison, Grimm's law and Werner's law. Gothic used a stress accent rather than the pitch accent of Proto-Indo-European. This is indicated by the shortening of long vowels e and o and the loss of short vowels a and i in unstressed final syllables. Just as in other Germanic languages, the free-moving Proto-Indo-European accent was replaced with one fixed on the first syllable of simple words. Accents do not shift when words are inflected. In most compound words, the location of the stress depends on the type of compound. In compounds in which the second word is a noun, the accent is on the first syllable of the first word of the compound. In compounds in which the second word is a verb, the accent falls on the first syllable of the verbal component. Elements prefixed to verbs are otherwise unstressed except in the context of separable words, words that can be broken in two parts and separated in regular usage, such as separable verbs in German and Dutch. In those cases, the prefix is stressed, for example, with comparable words from modern Germanic languages, non-compound words, marka, marka border, borderlands, English march, Dutch mark, aftra, atra, after, bijan, bijan, prey, Dutch, bidden, German bitten, Icelandic bija, English bid. Compound words, noun first element, gudelaus, godless. 
Verb second element, Galaubgen, Al Beta Jan, Belief Dutch Gelevin, German Glauben topic Grammar topic Morphology topic Nouns and adjectives Gothic preserves many archaic Indo European features that are not always present in modern Germanic languages, in particular the rich Indo European declension system. Gothic had nominative, accusative, genitive, and dative cases, as well as vestiges of evocative case that was sometimes identical to the nominative and sometimes to the accusative. The three genders of Indo-European were all present. Nouns and adjectives were inflected according to one of two grammatical numbers, the singular and the plural. Nouns can be divided into numerous declensions according to the form of the stem, a, o, i, u, and on, ein, r, etc. Adjectives have two variants, indefinite and definite sometimes indeterminate and determinate, with definite adjectives normally used in combination with the definite determiners such as the definite article sa, atta, sa while indefinite adjectives are used in other circumstances, indefinite adjectives generally use a combination of a stem and o stem endings, and definite adjectives use a combination of an stem and on stem endings. The concept of strong and weak declensions that is prevalent in the grammar of many other Germanic languages is less significant in Gothic because of its conservative nature. The so-called weak declensions, those ending in n, are in fact no weaker in Gothic in terms of having fewer endings than the strong declensions, those ending in a vowel, and the strong declensions do not form a coherent class that can be clearly distinguished from the weak declensions. Although descriptive adjectives in Gothic as well as superlatives ending in east and ost and the past participle may take both definite and indefinite forms, some adjectival words are restricted to one variant. Some pronouns take only definite forms, for example, sama English, same, adjectives like unila, constantly, from the root ala, time, compared to the English, while, comparative adjective and present participles. Others, such as ains, some, Take only the indefinite forms. The table below displays the declension of the Gothic adjective blind English, blind, compared with the instem noun guma, man, human, and the astem noun dags, day. This table is, of course, not exhaustive. There are secondary inflections of various sorts not described here. An exhaustive table of only the types of endings that Gothic took is presented below. Vowel declensions. Roots ending in a, ya, wa, masculine and neuter, equivalent to the Greek and Latin second declension in us, i and os. O roots ending in o, jo and wo, feminine, equivalent to the Greek and Latin first declension in a, a and alpha, as eta. S roots ending in i, masculine and feminine, equivalent to the Greek and Latin third declension in as, is, a b l, s g. I, gen. Place. I u m and as. Eos roots ending in U all three genders, equivalent to the Latin fourth declension in us, s and the Greek third declension in Ys. Eos and stem declensions, equivalent to the Greek and Latin third declension in O, Inus, Onus and On, Onos or N. Enos roots ending in an, Jan, Juan masculine. Roots ending in On and Ein feminine. Roots ending in N neuter, equivalent to the Greek and Latin third declension in Men, Minis and Ma. Mottos minor declensions, roots ending in R, ND and vestigial endings in other consonants, equivalent to other third declensions in Greek and Latin. Gothic adjectives follow noun declensions closely, they take same types of inflection. Topic. Pronouns Gothic inherited the full set of Indo-European pronouns, personal pronouns including reflexive pronouns for each of the three grammatical persons, possessive pronouns, both simple and compound demonstratives, relative pronouns, interrogatives and indefinite pronouns. Each follows a particular pattern of inflection partially mirroring the noun declension, much like other Indo-European languages. One particularly noteworthy characteristic is the preservation of the dual number, referring to two people or things. The plural was used only for quantities greater than two. Thus, the two of us and we for numbers greater than two were expressed as wit and weiss respectively. While Proto-Indo-European used the dual for all grammatical categories that took a number as did classical Greek and Sanskrit, most Old Germanic languages are unusual in that they preserved it only for pronouns. Gothic preserves an older system with dual marking on both pronouns and verbs but not nouns or adjectives. 
The simple demonstrative pronoun sa neuter, ada, feminine, so, from the Indo-European root asterisk so, asterisk se tu, asterisk tod, cognate to the Greek article ho, he tu and the Latin istud can be used as an article, allowing constructions of the type definite article plus weak adjective plus noun. The interrogative pronouns begin with which derives from the Proto-Indo-European consonant asterisk k that was present at the beginning of all interrogatives in Proto-Indo-European. That is cognate with the wh at the beginning of many English interrogative, which, as in Gothic, are pronounced with in some dialects. The same etymology is present in the interrogatives of many other Indo-European languages, w v in German, h v in Danish, the Latin ku which persists in modern Romance languages, the Greek tau or pi, the Slavic and Indic k as well as many others. Verbs <inaudible> 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 The bulk of Gothic verbs follow the type of Indo-European conjugation called thematic because they insert a vowel derived from the reconstructed Proto-Indo-European phonemes asterisk e or asterisk o between roots and inflectional suffixes. The pattern is also present in Greek and Latin. Latin leg I muse. We read. Root leg plus thematic vowel i from asterisk o plus suffix muse. Greek li omicron men. We untie. Root li plus thematic vowel omicron plus suffix men. Gothic, nim am. We take. Root nim plus thematic vowel a from asterisk o plus suffix m. The other conjugation, called athematic, in which suffixes are added directly to roots, exists only in unproductive vestigial forms in Gothic, just like in Greek and Latin. The most important such instance is the verb to be, which is athematic in Greek, Latin, Sanskrit, and many other Indo European languages. Gothic verbs are, like nouns and adjectives, divided into strong verbs and weak verbs. Weak verbs are characterized by preterites formed by appending the suffixes da or ta, parallel to past participles formed with t. Strong verbs form preterites by oblaut the alternating of vowels in their root forms or by reduplication prefixing the root with the first consonant in the root plus i but without adding a suffix in either case. That parallels the Greek and Sanskrit perfects. The dichotomy is still present in modern Germanic languages. Weak verbs. To have. Gothic, haban, preterite, habeda, past participle, habe. English, to have, preterite, had, past participle, had. German, haben, preterite, hadi, past participle, gehabt. Icelandic, hafa, preterite, hafi, past participle, haft. Dutch, heben, preterite, had, past participle, jihad. Swedish, ha, va, preterite, hade, supine, haft. Strong verbs. To give. Gothic, infinitive, jabon, preterite, gaff. English, infinitive, to, give, preterite, gave. German, infinitive, jebin, preterite, gab. Icelandic, infinitive, gefa, preterite, gaff. Dutch, infinitive, geven, preterite, gaff. Swedish, infinitive, give a ge, preterite, gav. Verbal conjugation in Gothic have two grammatical voices, the active and the medial, three numbers, singular, dual, except in the third person, and plural, two tenses, present and preterite, derived from a former perfect, three grammatical moods, indicative, subjunctive, from an old optative form, and imperative, as well as three kinds of nominal forms, a present infinitive, a present participle, and a past passive. Not all tenses and persons are represented in all moods and voices, as some conjugations use auxiliary forms. Finally, there are forms called preterite present. The old Indo European perfect was reinterpreted as present tense. The Gothic word wait, from the Proto Indo European asterisk woidh2e, to see, in the perfect, corresponds exactly to its Sanskrit cognate veda and in Greek to oida. Both etymologically should mean, I have seen in the perfect sense but mean I know in the preterite present meaning. Latin follows the same rule with noe I have learned and I know. The preterite present verbs include eigen to possess and kunin to know among others. Topic. Syntax Topic. Word order The word order of Gothic is fairly free as is typical of other inflected languages. 
The natural word order of Gothic is assumed to have been like that of the other Old Germanic languages, however, nearly all extant Gothic texts are translations of Greek originals and have been heavily influenced by Greek syntax. Sometimes what can be expressed in one word in the original Greek will require a verb and a complement in the Gothic translation, for example, diashthesuntai diashthesuntai, they will be persecuted, is rendered. Likewise Gothic translations of Greek noun phrases may feature a verb and a complement. In both cases, the verb follows the complement, giving weight to the theory that basic word order in Gothic is object-verb. This aligns with what is known of other early Germanic languages, however, this pattern is reversed in imperatives and negations. And in a wh question the verb directly follows the question word. Topic. Clitics. Gothic has two clitic particles placed in the second position in a sentence, in accordance with Wackernagel's law. One such clitic particle is U, indicating a yes-no question or an indirect question, like Latin ne. It should be noted that the prepositional phrase without the clitic U appears as afu sylban. The clitic causes the reversion of originally voiced fricatives, unvoiced at the end of a word, to their voiced form. Another such example is williad U. Do you place want? From wilei. You place want. If the first word has a proverb attached, the clitic actually splits the proverb from the verb, ga you laubiats. Do you both believe? From galabiats. You both believe. Another such clitic is a and appearing as h after a vowel, ga h melita. And he wrote. From gamelita. He wrote. Oris nim a. Arise and take. From the imperative form nim. Take. After I or any indefinite besides sums, some, and aner, another, a cannot be placed, in the latter category, this is only because indefinite determiner phrases cannot move to the front of a clause. It should be pointed out that, unlike, for example, Latin K, a can only join two or more main clauses. In all other cases, the word jaw, and, is used, which can also join main clauses. More than one such clitics can occur in one word, dis a and sat ihos, and then he seized them, fem, from dis sat, he seized. Notice again the voicing of dis, ga u a se, whether he saw anything, from gase, he saw. Topic. Comparison to other Germanic languages For the most part, Gothic is known to be significantly closer to Proto-Germanic than any other Germanic language except for that of the scantily attested early Norse runic inscriptions, which has made it invaluable in the reconstruction of Proto-Germanic. In fact, Gothic tends to serve as the primary foundation for reconstructing Proto-Germanic. The reconstructed Proto-Germanic conflicts with Gothic only when there is clearly identifiable evidence from other branches that the Gothic form is a secondary development. Topic. Distinctive features Gothic fails to display a number of innovations shared by all Germanic languages attested later Lack of Germanic umlaut Lack of rhoticism The language has also preserved many features that have been lost mostly in other early Germanic languages Dual inflections on verbs Morphological passive voice for verbs Reduplication in the past tense of class 7 strong verbs Clitic conjunctions that appear in second position of a sentence in accordance with Wackernagel's law, splitting verbs from pre-verbs. <laughs> Lack of umlaut Most conspicuously, Gothic shows no sign of morphological umlaut. Gothic fatus, place fatjus, can be contrasted with English foot, feet, German fu, few, Old Icelandic fodor, feeder, Danish fod, fodder. These forms contain the characteristic change, o, greater than, o stroke, greater than English, i, German, y, due to i umlaut, the Gothic form shows no such change. Topic. Lack of rhoticism Proto-Germanic asterisk Z remains in Gothic as Z or is devoiced to S. In North and West Germanic, asterisk Z changes to R by rhoticism. Gothic Dias, Gen. Sg, Diusic Old English Dior, Gen. Sg, Diores. Wild animal. Modern English Deer. 
Topic: <laughs> Passive voice. Gothic retains a morphological passive voice inherited from Indo-European but unattested in all other Germanic languages except for the single fossilized form preserved in, for example, Old English Hattie or Runic Norse c. 400 hate, am called, derived from Proto-Germanic asterisk hatana, to call, command. It should be noted that the related verbs hein in modern German and hetten in Dutch are both derived from the active voice of this verb but have the passive meaning, to be called alongside the dated active meaning, to command. The morphological passive in North Germanic languages Swedish gore does, gores is being done originates from the Old Norse middle voice, which is an innovation not inherited from Indo-European. Dual number Unlike other Germanic languages, which retain dual number marking only in some pronoun forms, Gothic has dual forms both in pronouns and in verbs. Dual verb forms exist in the first and second person only and only in the active voice, in all other cases, the corresponding plural forms are used. In pronouns, Gothic has first and second person dual pronouns, Gothic, Old English, Old Norse wit we too thought to have been in fact derived from asterisk y do literally we too. Topic reduplication Gothic possesses a number of verbs which form their preterite by reduplication, another archaic feature inherited from Indo-European. While traces of this category survived elsewhere in Germanic, the phenomenon is largely obscured in these other languages by later sound changes and analogy. In the following examples the infinitive is compared to the third-person singular preterite indicative, Gothic scion to sow, say so Old Norse saw, seri Gothic lichen to play, laylaic Old English lacken, leolc, lek topic Classification The standard theory of the origin of the Germanic languages divides the languages into three groups, East Germanic Gothic and a few other very scantily attested languages, North Germanic Old Norse and its derivatives, such as Swedish, Danish, Norwegian, Icelandic, and Faroese and West Germanic all others, including Old English, Old High German, Old Saxon, Old Low Franconian, Old Frisian and the numerous modern languages derived from these, including English, German, and Dutch. Sometimes, a further grouping, that of the Northwest Germanic languages, is posited as containing the North Germanic and West Germanic languages, reflecting the hypothesis that Gothic was the first attested language to branch off. A minority opinion the so-called Gotho-Nordic hypothesis instead groups North Germanic and East Germanic together. It is based partly on historical claims, for example, Jordanes, writing in the 6th century, ascribes to the Goths a Scandinavian origin. There are a few linguistically significant areas in which Gothic and Old Norse agree against the West Germanic languages. Perhaps the most obvious is the evolution of the Proto-Germanic asterisk JJ and asterisk WW into Gothic DDJ from pre-Gothic GGJ and GGW, and Old Norse GGJ and GGV Holtzman's Law, in contrast to West Germanic where they remained as semivowels. Compare modern English true, German true, with Gothic trigs, Old Norse triger. However, it has been suggested that these are, in fact, two separate and unrelated changes. A number of other posited similarities exist for example, the existence of numerous inchoative verbs ending in na, such as Gothic ga waknon, Old Norse vakna, and the absence of gemination before j, or in the case of Old Norse only g geminated before j, e.g. Proto-Germanic asterisk kunja greater than Gothic kuni kin, Old Norse kyn, but Old English sin, Old High German kuni. However, for the most part these represent shared retentions, which are not valid means of grouping languages. That is, if a parent language splits into three daughters A, B and C, and C innovates in a particular area but A and B do not change, A and B will appear to agree against C that shared retention in A and B is not necessarily indicative of any special relationship between the two. Similar claims of similarities between Old Gutnish and Old Icelandic are also based on shared retentions rather than shared innovations. Another commonly given example involves Gothic and Old Norse verbs with the ending t in the second person singular preterite indicative, and the West Germanic languages have i. The ending t can regularly descend from the Proto-Indo-European perfect ending asterisk the, while the origin of the West Germanic ending i, which, unlike the t ending, unexpectedly combines with the zero grade of the root as in the plural, is unclear, suggesting that it is an innovation of some kind, possibly an import from the optative. Another possibility is that this is an example of independent choices made from a doublet existing in the proto-language. 
That is, Proto-Germanic may have allowed either T or I to be used as the ending, either in free variation or perhaps depending on dialects within Proto-Germanic or the particular verb in question. Each of the three daughters independently standardized on one of the two endings and, by chance, Gothic and Old Norse ended up with the same ending. Other isoglosses have led scholars to propose an early split between East and Northwest Germanic. Furthermore, features shared by any two branches of Germanic do not necessarily require the postulation of a proto-language excluding the third, as the early Germanic languages were all part of a dialect continuum in the early stages of their development, and contact between the three branches of Germanic was extensive. Polish linguist Witold Manchak had argued that Gothic is closer to German, specifically Upper German than to Scandinavian and suggests that their ancestral homeland was located southernmost part of the Germanic territories, close to present-day Austria rather than in Scandinavia. Frederick Cortland has agreed with Manchak's hypothesis, stating, I think that his argument is correct and that it is time to abandon your Danza's classic view that the Goths came from Scandinavia. Influence The reconstructed Proto-Slavic language features several apparent borrowed words from East Germanic presumably Gothic, such as exleb bread, versus Gothic halafs. Use in Romanticism and the Modern Age Several linguists have made use of Gothic as a creative language. The most famous example is Bagma Bloma, Flower of the Trees, by J. R. R. Tolkien, part of Songs for the Philologists. It was published privately in 1936 for Tolkien and his colleague E. V. Gordon. Tolkien's use of Gothic is also known from a letter from 1965 to Zilla Schering. When she bought a copy of Thucydides' History of the Peloponnesian War in Salisbury, she found strange inscriptions in it. After she found his name in it, she wrote him a letter and asked him if the inscriptions were his, including the longest one on the back, which was in Gothic. In his reply to her, he corrected some of the mistakes in the text. He wrote, for example, that Hyundai should be Unda and Izo Boko of those books, which he suggested should be Izos Bokos of this book. A semantic inaccuracy of the text which he mentioned himself is the use of lisan for read, while this was Usiguin. Tolkien also made a calque of his own name in Gothic in the letter, which according to him should be Rujinwal dis Dwalakwanes. The Torvalsen Museum also has an alliterative poem, Thunraveld Sunau, from 1841 by Massman, the first publisher of the Skeirains, written in the Gothic language. It was read at a great feast dedicated to Torvalsen in the Gesellschaft der Zwanglosen in Munich on July 15, 1841. This event is mentioned by Ludwig Schorn in the magazine Kunstblatt from 19 July, 1841. Massmann also translated the academic commercium song Gaudeamus into Gothic in 1837. In 2012, Professor Bajarne Simola Hansen of the University of Copenhagen published a translation into Gothic of Adeste Fidels for Roots of Europe, in Fleur du Mal, an online magazine for art and literature. The poem Overvload of Dutch poet Bert Bevers appeared in a Gothic translation. Alice in Wonderland has been translated into Gothic by David Carlton in 2015 and is published by Michael Everson. Topic examples Topic See also List of Germanic languages Vocabulary Comparison of the Germanic languages For a chart comparing Gothic words to those of other Germanic languages Geats Guts Old Guttnisch Modern Guttnisch Grimm's Law Werner's Law Grammar of the Gothic Language Book Gothic Alphabet Topic Notes Topic References Bennett, William Holmes 1980. An Introduction to the Gothic Language. New York, Modern Language Association of America. W. Braun and E. Ebbinghaus, Gotisch Grammatik, 17th edition 1966, Tübingen 20th edition, 2004. ISBN 3-484-10852-5 HBK, ISBN 3-484-10850-9 PBK Fausto Cercignani, The Development of the Gothic Short, Lax Subsystem, in Zeitschrift für Vergleichende Sprachforschung, 93 halves, 1979, pp. 272-278. Fausto Cercignani, The Reduplicating Syllable and Internal Open Juncture in Gothic, in Zeitschrift für Vergleichende Sprachforschung, 93 over 1, 1979, pp. 126-132. 
Fausto Cercignani, The Enfants Terribles of Gothic Breaking, Hiri, Iao, etc., in The Journal of Indo-European Studies, 12-3-4, 1984, pp. 315-344. Fausto Cercignani, The Development of the Gothic Vocalic System, in Germanic Dialects, Linguistic and Philological Investigations, edited by Bella Brogiani and Thomas Cromelbein, Amsterdam and Philadelphia, Benjamins, 1986, pp. 121-151. N. Everett, Literacy from Late Antiquity to the Early Middle Ages, c. 300-800 AD, The Cambridge Handbook of Literacy, ed. D. Olson and N. Torrance, Cambridge, 2009, pp. 362-385. W. Krause, Handbuch des Gotischen, 3rd edition, 1968, Munich. Thomas O. Lambden, An Introduction to the Gothic Language, WIPF and Stock Publishers, 2006 Eugene, Oregon. F. Massé, Manuel de la Longue Gothique, Abier Editions Montaigne, 1942 Skeet, Walter William 1868. A Moso Gothic Glossary. London, Asher & Co., E. Prokosh, A Comparative Germanic Grammar, 1939, The Linguistic Society of America for Yale University. Ermengarde Roch, Gothic Language, Grammar, Genetic Provenance and Typology, Readings, Peter Lang Publishing Inc., Second Revised Edition, 2011 C. Rowe, The Problematic Holtzmann's Law in Germanic, Indogermanische Forschungen B.D., 108, 2003. 258 to 266 Stearns, MacDonald 1978 Crimean Gothic Analysis and Etymology of the Corpus Saratoga, California: ANMA Libri ISBN 0-915838-45-1 Wilhelm Streitberg, Die Gotische Bibel, 4th edition, 1965, Heidelberg Joseph Wright, Grammar of the Gothic Language, 2nd edition, Clarendon Press, Oxford, 1966 2nd edition, 1981 reprint by Oxford University Press, ISBN 0-19-811185-1 External links Gotisch im www portal for information on Gothic in German Germanic Lexicon Project, early public domain editions of several of the references. Texts The Gothic Bible in Latin alphabet The Gothic Bible in Ulfilin script Unicode text from Wikisource Titus has Streitberg's Gotisch Bible and Crimean Gothic material after Busbeck. Wolfilla Project Skeranes Project A website with the Skeranes including translations in Latin, German, French, Swedish, English, Dutch, Greek, Italian and Icelandic. Gothic Online from the University of Texas at Austin Gothic Readings Video Clips in Gothic Language Gothic Basic Lexicon at the Global Lexicostatistical Database Gothica Bonaniensa A page with information about the discovered Bonaniensa fragment from 2013